Hello and welcome to the 10th lecture on this course on chemical process design. This lecture is going to examine the subject of how to design the physical layout of the plant equipment that you've specified on your process flow diagram. We'll cover site and plot selection, introduce some rules of thumb for developing your process layout and finish by going through a workflow to assist you with the development of your plant layout. I'll also give some examples of what is expected from you at the end of your design project. As we go through this lecture, we will see that many items of equipment are subject to specific legislation. Where possible, I've provided copies of key pieces of legislation for you on Moodle. Where it hasn't been possible, I've made reference to the resources that you should make use of. For this part of Lecture 10, we'll start by considering site selection and some of the factors that should be considered when choosing where to locate your new plant. So, here on my whiteboard is a graphical representation of what that introduction has just said. This photograph is a photograph of the large petrochemical complex that is now owned and run by INEOS up at Grangemouth in Scotland. If one looks at a site like this, firstly you see a bewildering amount of pipework, of steelwork and of other infrastructure that is key to the successful and safe running of a chemical site. The challenge for you as the chemical engineer is to convert your process flow diagrams into something that ends up looking like this. So let's just narrow our scope of discussion because there's only so much that one can achieve in one lecture and really the topic of site and plant selection and layout is enough to fill an entire lecture course. So the outcomes of this particular lecture I'm going to limit to giving some information on the different types of site that are available, to providing a basic workflow for producing safe and effective plant layout, starting from a PFD and sizing calculations, to give some references for you to key standards that you should be aware of, and to give some examples of real plant layout and typical plant design project deliverables. So that limits our scope. Now, in terms of the first resource that you will find invaluable, it is this book here. It is a book by Sean Moran on process plant layout. It's an iChemy publication through Butterworth Heinemann and it gives you an incredibly detailed and industry standard discussion and set of examples on exactly how to set out the layout of a piece of plant. This book goes into orders of magnitude more detail than anything that I can do in one lecture and I thoroughly, thoroughly recommend it. So, the first thing you need to be thinking about is the site. This is the parcel of land where the plant goes. And you can have two different classes of site. You can have brownfield sites or greenfield sites. Now, brownfield sites are sites where industry has already been, probably now derelict or disused. And this photograph here is an example of such a site in Belgium. This is the old Sereng Steelworks near Liège in Belgium's old industrial quarter. And these steelworks have been around since the last part of the 18th century. This particular set of works has buildings dated from about 1903. So these sites are old. They've had significant industrial use and probably significant industrial contamination because environmental and safety standards in the last part of the 1800s and early part of the 1900s were a very, very different beast to what they are now. There's a likelihood of underground structures because lots of old sites were no located near or sometimes even on mine sites and access would have been provided with the mindset of a late 1800s and early 1900s plant and site, usually by railway. And so all of these old sites will require levelling, clearing, decontaminating and making safe, which is a huge set of civil and structural engineering works but it's very often easier to gain planning permission and very often because the wake of the industrial decline has left a significant amount of unemployment and deprived areas, there's often sufficient incentive for new build plant to go into these kind of areas. The other main thing is, of course, is it doesn't use up greenbelt land, which moves us on to our next type of site, which is a greenfield site. And here on the whiteboard is a picture of what a greenfield site looks like its countryside. No remedial treatments needed, There's access can be tailored to suit, but really you need to question should you be building on this type of land? Um, it's likely to be incredibly controversial, there's lots of environmental issues that you'll be facing, and really these areas of land are precious, 
and it shouldn't be subject to major industrialization when there is so much old industrial land in so much of the Western world that can be used instead. So let's think about some of the criteria you may wish to think around when choosing where to put a site. When you come to do your design project, your site and location is going to be prescribed for you. Um, so you're going to have no choice in that whatsoever. But the list I'm going to give now are sort of the considerations that will have gone into that prescription. First and foremost, we need to think safety. So lack of proximity to population centres. Chemical plant and chemical site are inherently dangerous sites, um, often containing large amounts of flammables, sometimes toxic and flammable material, large amounts of chemical process, a lot of potential for processes running at high pressure and high temperature. These are not processes you want near a population centre. And so a lack of proximity to population is ideal. Another key thing to think about is raw material supply. If you look at the history of the chemical industry, then you'll find a lot of the old chemical sites were located close to sites of raw materials. Chloralkali sites located next to old salt beds, sites that produce petrochemicals may be close to landing sites for oil and gas. You need to think of the cost of the land, of course, because that will factor into the economics of the overall project. You need to consider aspects of geography. Elevation profile, particularly when it comes to laying out equipment. I mean, if it's a very, very hilly site, it's going to be a nightmare to build on and get foundations into. Also, you need to think of drainage and flood risk, especially with a forward-thinking view to the potential for sea level rise. The seismic profile can also be incredibly important, as will illustrated by the Fukushima accident in Japan a few years ago. You need to think of the site geology. So you're going to be building a lot of structures, a lot of very large structures, potentially. If you look at the larger natural draft cooling towers, these are gigantic concrete structures that weigh very, very heavily. And so if they're not going to be built on solid ground, what's going to happen to them? Some of the older chemical sites are located near or on river estuaries, and there are, to this day, eyebrows raised as to the integrity, perhaps, of some of the foundations underneath these sites, because you're inherently looking at clays and muds. Also, you need to remember that most industrialised countries, or ex-industrialised countries, have got an industrial legacy, and it cannot be understated sufficiently that you've got to be aware of this, was particularly with regard to old mine workings. If you look at, for example, the UK, there's very little current mining today, but if you look at the old maps of where mines used to be, they littered the entire country. And so you need to be incredibly aware of what you're building on top of. The weather is going to be very, very important. If you think about heat exchange, first of all, a lot of your heat exchange requirements are met by cooling water, and the temperature of your cooling water is, of course, dictated by climatic conditions. If we think as well about the prevailing wind and safety, again, it's back to this case of you do not want your plant to, to pose a safety threat to any surrounding population. You do not build a plant upwind of population. You build it downwind. We also need to think about the ease of access to the site. You're liable to be getting a lot of large equipment either delivered to or fabricated on a site. How are you going to get it there? If you've got a country B road that's very, very twisty, you're never going to get large pieces of equipment on low loaders down roads of that nature. Very often you will find industrial sites located to major roads, major railways, and very importantly, rivers or canals, because it's sometimes it's a lot easier to float equipment of a very large side down a river than it is to deliver either by rail or by road. Then we need to think about who's going to be working on the site and how far people are going to have to travel to that site, which almost produces a rather difficult compromise, because on one hand, you don't want to be close to population centres, but on the other hand, you do want labour to be more or less readily available without a massive commute. Also, you need to think about planning registration and planning requirements and how easy it is going to be to actually get that. So this list is by no means exhaustive. Um, so the decision on where to place a chemical site is a very carefully made one and one that takes into account a lot of different and sometimes competing factors. So we're going to not talk about site selection any further. We're going to assume that we know where we're going to be building the site, as will be the case for your design project, and now go on to consider layout at the plot level. So, the plot is that bit of the site where you build your plant. 
So it's going to be the parcel of land within a chemical site that you're going to lay out your mechanical embodiment of your process flow diagram. So in effect, what we're doing is you're converting your process flow diagram, that incredibly important communication diagram, into a set of drawings that illustrate three different scenarios. The plant layout and access for normal use, the plant access and layout for emergency access, and the site and plant layout for access during construction. And these, this graphical information will be communicated in side views, such as the following, and there may be more than one side view included, depending on what it is you wish to illustrate, and also plan views. And I'll give you more detailed examples of what these drawings look like in the third and final part of this lecture. So, in the conversion between process flow diagram and layout drawing, we need to consider, again, quite a few different aspects. First and foremost, safety. So how do we safely get into and out of the plant? How do we safely access the units on the plant? And how do we safely place buildings with respect to plant? For example, where do you decide to put control rooms? And what isolation do you need around certain pieces of inherently dangerous process equipment, such as fired heaters and furnaces? We need to think about the operability of the process. Why use pumps when you can use gravity? Can you use gravity to provide either flow or static head for pressure? How are you going to place items of heat exchange equipment together that need heat integration? You want to minimise your pipe runs. You want to also minimise your overall pressure drop through a plant because pressure drops cost money and money costs carbon. And so we want to try and make our plant plot and plant layout as carbon effective as possible. You need to think of security. Given half a chance, there are sectors of the population that will break in and steal anything. So you must ensure that unauthorised access cannot occur to your plant and to your site. We also need to think about cost effectiveness. How are you going to minimise your structural steel work? How can you use one piece of structural steel work to carry out multiple different support tasks? How are you going to minimise your foundations? And how are you going to minimise your pipe runs? So let's recap a few key points. We've said that new plants can be built on either brownfield or greenfield sites, that there are many different factors that influence the choice of a site, which are not limited to things like the proximity to urban centres or lack thereof, the proximity to raw materials, the availability of labour, the cost, the proximity to feedstocks and so on and so forth. We start the layout process by considering safety first and foremost, then thinking about our process operability, security, and then cost effectiveness.